Okay, what we're going to do is start talking about the mathematical foundations of this course. And to start us off, what we're going to start talking about is what we refer to as atomic mass. Now, we've talked about atomic mass when we were talking about atomic structure, and we basically defined atomic mass as the average mass of all the isotopes of a particular element. Well, what we're going to do is take a little bit closer look at that. So just as a quick review, if you're looking at the periodic table and we're talking about carbon, you'll notice that the value given for carbon's mass is 12.01 with a few more digits uh, usually given. What that represents is the average mass of the isotopes, carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14 also. So let's take a look at how these masses are determined. What's used to determine these masses of these elements or isotopes is what we refer to as a mass spectrometer. Oftentimes it's called a mass spectrophotometer also. What we'll do is describe how the mass spectrometer works in determining the different masses of things that are so small. So what I'm going to do is read through the directions here and we're going to refer to a diagram but what you might want to do is go back and forth between the directions in the, in the diagram. Okay, first of all what happens is an atom or a molecule is passed through a beam of high-speed electrons. As this atom moves through this beam, the beam knocks the electrons off of the atom. So then what happens as this atom passes through the beam, the beam knocks electrons off of the atom. So if you're taking away the electrons which are negative, what's going to be left over is a positive ion. So for example, if you're shooting hydrogen through that beam and it knocks off hydrogen's one electron, what's left is the hydrogen ion, which is positive. Then that positive ion is affected by an applied electric field. In other words, you're putting an electric field on that ion to accelerate it into a magnetic field. And then what happens is that ion interacts with that magnetic field, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna change the direction of that ion based on its mass. So let's take a look at the diagram first. So those atoms are put into the device and we said that that electron beam then knocks the electrons off of those atoms. The positive ion moves through this accelerator. What happens is it goes into this magnetic field and as the, as the atom or positive ion interacts with this magnetic field, it's going to bend depending on its mass. So if you've got carbon-12 isotopes present, carbon-13 isotopes present, what's going to happen is the more massive ion is going to bend a little bit less. The less massive ion will be affected more by that magnetic field and it'll bend a little bit more. So what we end up having is this data that tells us relative masses of these ions. So for example, what we do is use carbon-12 as the standard. In other words, you put element carbon through the mass spectrometer and you assume that the carbon-12 isotopes are the standard. So what we do is we assign a value of 12 atomic mass units to carbon-12. All of the other elements are then based on that standard. So if we go back to our mass spectrometer, let's say this dot here represent, represents carbon-12 and this dot here represents carbon-13. What you can do is you take the relative masses, so let's say you have carbon-12 and you're comparing it to carbon-13, you might get a value of whatever, 1.03 or 1.03 or 1.0, whatever the value comes out to be. So what that means is you would take carbon-12 
And then 1.03 times carbon-12 would be the mass of carbon-13. And its mass might come out to be 13.153. So in other words, you take the value carbon-12, multiply it by that factor, and then you get the mass of carbon-13. If you had a sample of magnesium, you would put the magnesium atom through this, you would get some sort of value, and then you would compare the mass of the magnesium to carbon-12, and you would get a number that's equal to roughly 2 point something. So carbon-12 is 12, the magnesium would then be 24 point whatever. So you would determine the mass of the isotopes of magnesium based on your data for carbon-12. So if you were actually looking at this data, it would look something like this. For example, let's say you put a sample in the mass spectrometer. What it would say here is that 91% of your sample has a mass of 20, 0.3% of your sample has a mass of 21, and 9% of your sample has a mass of 22. So what you can do then is use that data to come up with the average atomic mass of what ele whatever element is you happen to be looking at. So if we put our sample of carbon through the mass spectrometer, what we would find is that roughly 99% of the carbon sample is going to be carbon-12. Now remember, we gave carbon-12, we used it as the standard, so its mass is 12 AMUs. Carbon-13 only accounts for 1.11% of our sample, and carbon-14 is just 0.01%. In fact, oftentimes when you calculate the average atomic mass of carbon, you only use the carbon-12 and carbon-13. So our mass spectrometer would have given us a mass of our carbon-13, and what you would find is that that mass is 13.0034. Now remember, we said that carbon-12 is the standard, so its mass is going to be 12. So if you think back when we got our, when we compared our data, our carbon-12 to our carbon-13, we got some value of what one point whatever. Well, if we took that one point whatever times 12, the answer would have been 13.0034. So that's the mass we assign to carbon-13. So when we go to calculate the value on the periodic table, we take the percentage of carbon-12 times its mass plus the percentage of carbon-13 times its mass, and then that is the value that gets reported on the periodic table. So when you're calculating average atomic mass, you'll see masses of, say, carbon-13 given as that value. Oftentimes the question is asked, if carbon-13 has an atomic number of 6 and a mass number of 13, that means it has 6 protons and 7 neutrons. If the proton weighs 1 and the neutron weighs 1, how do you get a mass of that? Well, you, remember when, you should remember, when we say the mass of a proton is 1 and the mass of a neutron is 1, those are approximations. This value is the exact value given from the data based on the standard carbon-12. Okay, what we're going to do then is use that data to then calculate values off of the periodic table. So if you have any questions, email them to hannonandchemistry at gmail.com and continue with the following podcasts.